In the dock, after all the build-up, it was still quite a shock tonight to see former President Trump in court charged with 34 separate crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. It was clearly a huge day for Mr. Trump himself, but also for the world's most powerful democracy. Dan was with the president in New York, whilst Robert has been taking the temperature of voters in Florida. I believe that Donald Trump will be the, the nominee for the Republican Party, and I believe that he will win in a landslide. I hope this shines a light onto, it's not just him, it's other politicians doing this. There are so many questions tonight. Could he really go to prison? How would that even work with his security service detail? And will this ultimately help or hinder his presidential bid? Also on News at 10. Shock in Scotland tonight as a man is sentenced to just community service after being found guilty of the rape of a 13-year-old girl, leaving the new First Minister floundering. I don't think we should judge our commitment to rehabilitating uh, offenders based on one sentencing decision. Finland joins NATO in another blow for President Putin. She will now be known as the Queen. Buckingham Palace effectively announces Camilla will no longer be Queen Consort. And... For all mums everywhere, after Michelle Yeoh thanked her mum from the Oscars, Debbie travels to Malaysia to hear her reaction. Did you expect her to win? Sure. <laughs> Every mother the same. This is On TV News at 10 with Tom Bradby. Good evening. If Donald Trump was treated like a common criminal suspect inside a New York court this evening, there was nothing common about the sight of a former president facing a list of criminal charges. Despite some rum characters over the years and a few close calls, it has never happened before, and it is a long list. 34 counts of falsifying business records after an investigation into hush money paid to an adult film star. It was hushed and calm inside the court as President Trump pleaded not guilty. Outside, it was anything but. Supporters and critics of Mr Trump divided by fencing and the police bellowed at each other and indeed towards him. They are the same divisions of his past presidency and indeed of his current plans to run again. His fingerprints were taken, like all suspects are, and he and his supporters do detect the fingerprints, or so they say, of left-wing prosecutors wanting to bring him down on the charge sheet. No right this was the shot. moment when America Thank saw you. no one is above the law. Tower, Donald right? Trump emerged from the tower which bears his name on Fifth Avenue, a characteristic fist pump and a wave before he embarked on a journey whose ultimate destination is unclear. The normally traffic-choked streets of Manhattan had been cleared for a 15-vehicle motorcade. 14 minutes later, he was at court, ready to face President criminal Trump. charges for the first Please time in his life. Throughout the hearing, he looked forlorn as the charges were read. For almost an hour, he heard legal argument and then entered a not guilty plea to 34 counts of falsifying business records. Case 715423 is unlike anything ever heard in a US court. This photo may end up defining his bid for the White House next year, for better or worse. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. He emerged without a word to the press. Instead, his legal team occupied the spotlight. Today's unsealing of this indictment shows that the rule of law died in this country. Because ev while everyone is not above the law, no one's below it either. And if this man's name was not Donald J. Trump, there is no scenario we'd all be here today. Please understand that based on these charges, Outside the Manhattan court, cameras from all over the world 
and protesters from either side of America's great political chasm. He's standing in that courtroom for us. Do you think he may end up going to prison? Absolutely no. not. He's going to get a 20% boost in the polls today. He got 10% yesterday. I'm expecting 20% today. So it's going to help Donald Trump. And Alvin Bragg is going to go down in flames. Get out of here! You get out of here! At times, the two tribes coming face to face with predictable results. Those gathered were entrenched in their opinions. It's a threat to democracy and that all Americans need to stand up for democracy. I'm hoping for uh, a trial that's going to result in what's best for America. And that is that he goes to prison. The case against Donald Trump relates to hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. It's claimed it was to cover up their alleged affair before the 2016 election. His departure lacked any of the high-energy drama which he normally exudes, a fleeting glimpse before he was ushered into a waiting vehicle. As Donald Trump leaves court, he'll be fully aware that this isn't the only time he'll have to appear before a judge. He'll be back here in Manhattan as this case progresses and there are other investigations which may result in more charges. He left New York now an indicted man. He hopes this spectacle may propel him back to the White House, but his path to power is far from certain. What is clear is that America has now entered a volatile new era. Dan Rivers, News at 10, New York. Well, the fallout from President Trump's appearance in court, rather like the man himself, defies logic. His supporters gathering tonight to welcome him back to his home in Florida believe it has improved his chances of returning to the White House in the 2024 election. They point to an $8 million boost in his funding. The latest polls say he is indeed closing the gap on President Biden. A handful of the ultra-loyalists stood guard outside the gates of Mar-a-Lago. Trump being trusted inside New York courthouse. But as they watched the charging of their political hero, their contempt for the whole process was undisguised. What is your reaction to these images of, of, from the courthouse? Uh, it's a circus, clown show, it's a witch hunt. Absolutely. And the people are speaking and they, they support Trump and they're behind him and they're trying to do everything they can to stop him. Do you see this as corruption? Oh, absolutely. This is beyond communism. <laughs> Trump supporters lined the road to the airport yesterday. Yeah! And they will be doing the same in the next hour as Trump returns from Manhattan. A criminal defendant, yes. But to these voters, he is their recent president and just possibly their next one as well. Those who organize his rallies and sell his merchandise say the New York case will backfire. Do you think this actually strengthens Donald Trump? Uh, definitely. I mean, what doesn't kill him is going to make him stronger. The criminal justice system in the United States today does not exist. If you are a Republican and conservative, if I jaywalk, they're going to arrest me. If you're the other side, a liberal Democrat or whatever, they're getting away with murder. I believe that Donald Trump will be the, the nominee for the Republican Party, and I believe that he will win in a landslide in, the, in November of next year because the people are seeing right through all this insanity. We know what Trump is likely to say in his primetime speech here tonight because his messaging has been consistent for weeks, portraying America as at a crossroads with the upcoming presidential race being the great showdown. And 2024 is the final battle. That's going to be the big one. If you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. But in the bars of Florida, there are more nuanced views. Amid fears, all of this is stoking growing political passions. We have a rule of law here in America and everybody has to be held accountable. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, that we should let the court case play out to see, you know, what it says. I hope this shines a light onto, it's not just him, it's other politicians doing this, it's other people in positions of power doing this. There he is, uh, right there, you see the back of his head as he's walking toward the, uh, the courthouse. Um, For all the severe legal jeopardy he faces, Donald Trump is tonight exactly where he wants to be. 
former president Trump just entered. He took a left. He went into the same. At the center of a maelstrom of media attention. And he will exploit that to the full tonight when he gives his speech from his Mar-a-Lago estate. Well, as always with President Trump, it's just one plot twist after another that you wouldn't uh, really credit, but that's where we are tonight. Uh, so uh, let's go back to Dan. Dan, one heck of a day, really. I mean, even though we were expecting it, still quite something to see him in the dock. And so many questions, really, like how strong is the case? Could he really go to prison even if found guilty? And how on earth would that actually work with his security service detail and everything else? Does anyone have any idea? No, in, 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 in short answer, um, an incredible day, really. I feel like we've been talking about the possibility of him facing criminal charges since before even he became uh, president. Yet finally, here he was in person to answer the 34 felony charges in this indictment, each of them uh, a class E felony carrying uh, with them a potential four year prison sentence. But look, will he end up in prison? I think it's an awfully long way away uh, from anything like that being a possibility. Um, not least this case is going to take months, maybe years uh, to come uh, to a conclusion. Uh, there are other cases that may overtake it in the meantime that are arguably more legally serious for him. And then there's the small matter uh, of a presidential election, which he is a, a declared candidate for. He is ahead in the polls. And as you hinted there, Tom, what on earth uh, happens if he does uh, become president and these cases are continuing? Really, we, we have no idea, but it's going to be uh, quite the spectacle to watch over the coming months. Dan, thank you very much indeed. And, of course, we are waiting for um, Mr Trump to get back to Florida, where we expect him uh, to speak to America and, indeed, uh, the world. And we'll try to go back to Robert at the end of this programme uh, to see how we're progressing with that. But let's move on to other news. And Scotland's new First Minister, Humza Yosef, has appeared uh, to back a more lenient way of dealing with young rapists that survivors' charities have called extraordinary. Under Scotland's recently revised sentencing guidelines, a 21-year-old convicted rapist who attacked a 13-year-old girl was not sent to jail but got community service instead. This is the case of a man who walked out of court not after being acquitted, but after being found guilty of raping a 13-year-old girl. Instead of going to prison, 21-year-old Sean Hogg has been sentenced to 270 hours community service. I think this is a completely extraordinary case. I cannot think of any circumstances where community service is an appropriate sentence for the rape of a 13-year-old girl. And I think it sends entirely the wrong message about how serious their legal system takes the issue of rape. In any other part of the UK, Hogg's crime would normally result in prison time. But as of January last year, Scotland has new sentence guidelines for anyone convicted while they're under the age of 25. And the understanding that the brain is not fully developed until the late 20s, this guideline calls for young people to be treated more leniently than a fully developed adult. From court papers, we know Sean Hogg attacked the girl several times over four months. He threatened her, seized her wrists, forced her to carry out a sex act and raped her in a park. Sean Hogg now lives out in the community here in Lanarkshire. He's never shown any remorse. He has never apologised to his victim. In fact, his senior counsel indicates he still intends to appeal. And so this is now an attempt to rehabilitate a rapist who does not accept he has done anything wrong. Scotland's new First Minister is also a former Justice Minister and today he defended these guidelines that give more lenient sentences to under 25s. I don't think we should judge our commitment to rehabilitating uh, offenders based on one sentencing decision. I can understand, of course, the, the reason why I asked the question. But I think it's right that we do everything we possibly can to ensure people just don't end up in the revolving door, going from prison to court, back in the community and back into prison. Today we went to the address we believe Sean Hogg is now staying. There was no response. But there may now be a response from Scotland's Public Prosecution Service. An appeal from the Crown Office could still see Sean Hogg behind bars. Peter Smith, News at 10, Lanarkshire.
Now, when Russia invaded Ukraine more than a year ago, NATO, the Western Military Alliance, had 30 members. President Putin claimed his invasion was, at least in part, to halt any NATO expansion. And that has not turned out so well, because tonight there are 31. Finland, fearful of its Russian neighbour, officially joined, switching from neutral to NATO. Uh, a pretty... Big moment, which Rohit, our security editor, is here to explain. Well, Tom, with the stroke of a pen today, the security map uh, of Europe was rewritten. But what difference will it make? It's 11 months since Finland applied to join. And today, this, the flag of Finland, was raised at NATO headquarters. Finland does have a long history of military non-alignment. So this was once unthinkable. But now it is subject to Article 5, the Collective Defence Clause, which says an attack against one is an attack against all. When President Putin had as a uh, declared goal uh, of uh, the invasion of Ukraine to uh, get less NATO, he's getting exactly the opposite. So what does more NATO look like? Well, this was the border between NATO and Russia up until a few hours ago. But look at it now. Here's the dividing line from south to north, uh, Helsinki one side, St. Petersburg the other. The land border between NATO and Russia has now doubled. This is in part about geography. A bigger nuclear neighbour who, until recently, many Finns seemed unwilling to provoke by joining NATO. Uh, but it's about history too. Finland fought off a Soviet invasion during the early years of the Second World War. So what can the Finnish army offer NATO now? Well, they bring 280,000 military personnel. That huge number partly explained by the conscription system. But Finland has a huge artillery capability too, with around 1,500 state-of-the-art systems ready to go. Now, to get here, Finland has faced a strategic puzzle. It has a despot next door, and today the Kremlin called the move an assault against its security. But we've looked through the archives and found that last June, Putin didn't seem quite so concerned. There's nothing that might concern us in terms of Finland and Sweden becoming NATO members. It all suggests that without new NATO military bases, he didn't see a threat back then. But things have changed since. Putin might now want to send more troops west. Can he, when he's still struggling in Ukraine? Or will his setbacks there push him uh, to seek political and military opportunity elsewhere? Tom? Rohit, I did not know the Finnish artillery was so impressive. Uh, but for that and much else, thank you very much indeed. Now, the current system of fining water companies for releasing sewage into our rivers and seas does not seem to be terribly successful, does it? More than 800 sewage spills every single day suggest the fines aren't really working. So the Environment Secretary, Therese Coffey, is raising the stakes, saying the fines could be unlimited in England with the money given to local clean-up groups. Also in her imaginatively titled plan for water is the end of the wet wipe. If people can't be trusted not to flush them down the toilet, then they'll be banned. If you want to see just how dirty our rivers are, take a look at the hull of one of these rowing boats on the Thames. This is some sewage that was stuck to one of our boats yesterday um, that we had to clean off at the end of our session. One of the biggest problems is sewers backing up after heavy rain. This gross geezer, an extreme example. In London, a £4 billion, 16-mile-long super sewer is being built to stop overflows into the river. But the Thames isn't the only place with problems. From West Sussex, to West Yorkshire. Not a single waterway in England has been officially rated clean. This morning, the government laid out what it will do. We've got a comprehensive plan for water that's designed to tackle pollution at source, also how it's treated, and to increase the penalties on people who do the polluting. The plan includes a potential ban on some chemicals within farming that often run into the rivers, more water meters for customers and unlimited fines for water companies that release too much sewage into the sea and river. Plus a ban on plastic wet wipes. 
As I've seen firsthand, they don't break down and can congeal with grease and grime to make fatbergs which block pipes. It's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Unlike plastic wet wipes which don't degrade, campaigners accuse the government of recycling old policies. It's simply regurgitating ideas we've heard before that have never been delivered. They say, for example, the third occasion the government has announced they're going to deal with wet wipes. Uh, it's the third water plan in the last six months. I'm afraid to me it just feels very much like an act of desperation in the run-up to the local elections. To make a real difference, campaigners say, would require a sea change in policy and people running the water industry. A reminder, sewage is discharged into waterways 825 times a day on average. Ecologists say it's not too late. Take, for example, the Wandle here in South London. It was branded ecologically dead as a result of industrialisation, but now since it's been cleaned, brown trout are starting to return. The government says drastic action around the country would take years and add hundreds to water bills. A prospect nearly as unappetising as swimming in our sewage-filled waters. Martin Stew, News at 10. Gives you the creeps, really, doesn't it? Now, the regulator, which oversees social media, has backed away from the original £27 million fine it had threatened TikTok with for not protecting the data of its users properly, particularly children. Instead, the Information Commissioner's Office has imposed a fine of less than half that, £12.7 million. It said TikTok had not done enough to stop nearly a million and a half under 13s using its platform and had then collected their personal information to inform what future content to push their way. TikTok said it disagreed with the finding. The office decided not to press ahead with its claim that TikTok had unlawfully used data relating to users' race, religion, politics, sexual orientation or health. As part of the countdown to the coronation, just over a month away now, a new portrait of Charles and Camilla has been issued in the past half an hour. And we've learned that from the day itself, May the 6th, Camilla will drop her consort title and just be known as the Queen, or Queen Camilla. And Libby is here to talk about all this. Um, I think we were told, as I recall, unless my brain is fading, which it may well be, but um, I thought we were told she was just going to be called... Queen Consul. So this does feel like quite a significant change. I think it is a significant moment. Uh, and in fact, it has been a very long journey for Camilla. Cast your mind back to 2005 when she married the then Prince Charles. At the time, there was an opinion poll. Uh, people asked whether they thought someday she should become Queen. And only 28% of Britons thought that that should be the case. 57% disagreed with the idea. Well, public opinion has shifted, and I think a reflection of that was the Queen, the late Queen Elizabeth, in her uh, Platinum Jubilee year. She made it clear that she wanted Camilla, after her death, to become known as the Queen Consort. Well, times have moved very quickly, as you were suggesting, and now in the invitation uh, to the coronation. Uh, the uh, details of that have just been released. I think we can see an image. It does say the invitation to the coronation of uh, Their Majesties King Charles III and Queen Camilla. That is the first reference to her as Queen Camilla. And uh, Buckingham Palace say it was an appropriate time for this name change. But I think there are people who have uh, long memories of the royal family in recent times. They will be perhaps surprised at the speed at which this has happened. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's perhaps a reflection of uh, King Charles wanting his uh, bride to be seen in the same light as previous kings. And previous kings in recent history, well, their spouses have been called queen. OK. Libby, that was very clear. Thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, let's go back, as I said, before we get to our and finally item tonight, let's go back to our top story, President Trump's appearance in court. He's on a flight back home to Florida right now and is expected to give a news conference there sometime after 1 a.m. Uh, UK time. We'll have all the details uh, on our website and uh, on ITVX, so do join us uh, for that. But in the meantime, let's uh, hear from Robert. Um, Robert, what do we expect him to say in, 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 in all. And I, I guess the key question is, we know this appeals to his base, but does it appeal beyond that? Well, uh, Tom, as you can probably hear, tremendous uh, amount of noise here at the moment because Donald Trump is expected to pass this way 
in the next few minutes. His supporters already gathered here uh, close to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, to answer your question, Tommy, I think we've got a very good idea what he's going to say tonight because Donald Trump is not a man who changes his legal strategy or indeed his political messaging. He's almost certainly going to show no contrition. That's not in his playbook. Rather, he is going to uh, launch a full-throated attack on the prosecutor and on the criminal justice uh, system. But you're right, of course. I mean, that's a strategy that plays well with his base. It galvanizes his loyalists. It does not bring in his uh, any potential centrist voters. So what we have, I think, here in America is essentially a big political gamble by Donald Trump that actually the 2024 race is going to be fought on the culture wars, on the polarizing issues of the day. It is not going to be what well, it's going to it's going to assume there is no effective center ground in American politics. And the strategy appears to be working. His poll ratings are going up, as you have pointed out. Uh, he's raising huge amounts of money at the moment, and he is eclipsing many of his political opponents. So it's important to remember, though, that there's much uncertainty. The legal dramas are just beginning. Three more uh, indictments are potentially coming down the track. And by common consensus, they're more serious than the one that played out in that New York courtroom today. OK, Robert, thank you very much indeed. Well, finally then, when the star of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Michelle Yeoh, picked up her Best Actress Oscar three weeks ago, she dedicated her win to her mother back home in Malaysia. It was the kind of moment every mum everywhere would have appreciated. Certainly, Janet Yeoh did. Her daughter is an inspiration, she told us. Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> Janet Yeoh's reaction to her daughter's Oscar win almost stole the show on the night. She had tears of joy streaming down her face, even before Michelle dedicated the award to her. She's 84, and I'm taking this home to her. When we met in the capital Kuala Lumpur this afternoon, Janet was still brimming with pride. I'm proud of her. Not easy. And not very hard, you know. You see, 95 years, so long I didn't know Asian. The first. Did you expect her to win? Sure. <laughs> Every mother the same. And like most parents, Janet had some old family photos to show us. One of Michelle on her fourth birthday, another of her the year she won Miss Malaysia, and this one of them together last Christmas. It is clear from the billboards in central KL how much Michelle also means to her country. She will return for a homecoming party with family and fans later this month. When Michelle Yeoh brings her Oscar back home here to Kuala Lumpur, it's not just the award people will be celebrating, it's what it represents. The glass ceilings she has smashed in Hollywood to show that no matter your age, gender or ethnicity, dreams can come true. Michelle began her acting career in Hong Kong appearing in kung fu films alongside Jackie Chan. But it took her 40 years to land her first lead Hollywood role in Everything Everywhere All at Once. What's happening? Her performance as struggling laundrette owner Evelyn Wang earned her a Golden Globe and Academy Award. I am paying attention. We frigging broke that <laughs> glass ceiling. Yeah! I kung fu it out and shattered it. Janet believes Michelle's hard work will inspire the next generation. All the now young girls and young boys must follow her. She is a hard-working girl. She not halfway through that everything. No, she's very hard-working one day. So what has been your favourite film of Michelle's so far? Everyone also like, I like the fighting one. <laughs> but this movie, because I'm old already, very fast, I can't understand. Must see twice, then I understand. One of Michelle's next films is an adaptation of the musical Wicked, and we found out where she gets her singing talent. They asked me how I knew my true love was true. Like mother, like daughter. Showing you are never past your prime. I'll Debbie Edward, News at 10, Kuala Lumpur. Something here inside. 
Smoke gets in your eyes, the Janet Yeo version. How about that? More Trump on ITVX later and tomorrow and forever and ever and ever. Good night. Thanks for watching.